Welcome to Talking Fly Guys with Travis. I'm your host, Travis Ballinghoff. This podcast, I will be bringing you guys my analysis and opinions on the Flyers, as well as providing some unique interviews. This week's guest, former Flyer Riley Cote. But before we get into that, let's go over last game. I'll keep this shorter than usual because they've only played one game since I last spoke to you guys. They were shut out Wednesday night by the Toronto Maple Leafs 3 0. It was an ugly game. The Flyers did not play well. They tried forcing a lot of passes. They didn't have too many high danger chances. Most of their shots were pretty far out without much traffic in front. Their offense has dried up as of late, only nine goals in their last six games. They do go on the road for a back to back against Carolina and Dallas this weekend. Both Kevin Hayes and Ryan Ellis are making the road trip, so let's hope they're able to get back into the lineup soon. One constant all year long, Carter Hart. Uh, Despite losing, Carter Hart played phenomenal once again. He made grade A save after grade A save and really kept the Flyers in it. But now, let's hop over to Riley Cote. Joining me this week... This man played parts of four seasons with the Philadelphia Flyers, racking up 65 career NHL fights when adding up preseason, regular season, and playoffs. He also was the assistant coach for the Phantoms for seven years, now currently co-hosting the Nasty Knuckles podcast and co-founder of Body Check Wellness, Riley Cote. What's going on, Riggs? Not much, man. What's happening? Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for hopping on. So let's get right into it. It appears that... um, Things have kind of dampered in Flyers land after that 3 nothing loss. Seems like the mood kind of changed in the fan base, but what would you say uh, is going on with the overall start to the season? Yeah, I think outside of that effort, um, I'm liking what I'm seeing. You know, I, I, I feel like there's a good energy. Seems like there's chemistry um, on and off the ice. They're finding ways to, to win. Um, you know, I like the defense core. You got to, you know, I think both goalies are are playing well, they complement each other. Um, I'm like what I'm seeing, you know, I, I mean, we're missing a couple pieces too. So, that, you know, that's a positive, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the last game was tough there, um, obviously, but um, um, the overall effort and the, and the overall uh, production and execution seems to be, uh, seems to be on point. So, I mean, compared to, compared to last year, I know that last year they started off well, probably won some games they shouldn't have it was a little bit more inconsistent i feel like the effort and the overall attitude seems to be a lot more consistent so what do you think about the overall play of the goaltenders looks like carter hart and martin jones have been very well so far yeah you know i i, I like what i'm seeing martin jones is um he's looking good uh, carter hart seems to be back where he needs to be um you know and and, and i think a lot of that confidence, you know, comes back around when you when you add some pieces around you. You know, for a guy like Carter, last year was a tough season for everybody, but you know, the, the defense core was uh, was suspect. And I think when you beef that up, um, naturally it gives a little more confidence to goaltending. Uh, not that he needed that to get confidence, but it, it certainly helps, right? I mean, you got guys that can move the puck out better. You play away from your net a little bit more obviously um but you still got to make the saves and i feel like he's uh you know I'm trying to think of some of the goals but you know outside of that overtime goal the wraparound backhand wraparound probably should have had that but you know but the couple you know you could be nit- nitpicky all day long but i think overall he's uh he's been solid he's won the games and uh um, and, and i think that, that that combination of having a guy like jones um that steps in and and and, and plays well um I, I'm, I'm liking what i'm seeing there too they scored 23 goals in the first five games and just nine in the last six. Do you think they're just in a rut right now, or is there something you like, uh, or is there something you're seeing that you don't like? Well, you know what, as the season goes on, you know, teams become aware of what other teams are doing, right? So there's, there's a lot of pre-scouting going on in this, so there could be a combination of, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's tough to stay with that consistency of scoring that many goals, you know? So you know that they're going to probably hit a, some bit of a drought naturally but you know again teams try and tighten up and they're you know they're they're probably over coaching and watching you know more than enough video to try and counter that um you know offensive execution so 
I think it's a little bit of both, you know, again, it's, it's hard to score in the NHL and it just, to score that many goals is probably not realistic um, long-term, but um, I think it's a combination of teams just defending a little bit better, um, tightening it up, knowing that the Flyers have that offensive punch, uh, but also um, again, it's uh, the, every, every goal scorer, every team goes through it where you, you know, you go through a little bit of dry spells. So maybe that's, Maybe that's what it is a little bit, but I think it's a combination of both teams. Teams are aware of what guys are doing. You know what I mean? It's like, you know who the shooters are, you know how to, you know, you know where we need to be when the pucks are placed at the net and, and picking up sticks and tying up guys and trying to eliminate the secondary chances. So I think teams are probably just going to line up playing flyers a little bit more tight um, just based on their ability to score goals. It seems like a very polarizing player in the fan base is Rasmus Ristolainen. Like, if you look at uh, social media, half the fan base thinks he's awesome and the other half thinks he's terrible and there's really no middle ground. Uh, what would you make of his play? Yeah, you know, I think you, you got to give him a little more time, you know. Uh, to, to me, I mean, I mean, he's a he's a good player, you know, and um, I think he brings something that some of these other offensive guys don't with, you know, obviously his size and his physicality. Um, you can't have all the same type of defensemen, you know what I mean? I know, you know, Ellis is out there for, for a few games and, and like, there's just a, a different, different piece of the puzzle. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's a, a new space for him. I think he, you know, he battled a couple of different little injuries there. Um, I think, I think he'll be fine. You know, I think, I think he just needs to kind of settle in. Um, and um, I, I think he'll be a good piece for the Flyers, but, I think he, fans are generally so hard on people there. They, they have these expectations of like he's gonna, you know, he's gonna carry the mail every every day and every game, and um, that's not that's, that's not his game, anyways. Um, you know what I mean? I think he needs to really be focusing on being uh, a good defender, you know, having a good stick, playing physical, and not getting scored on. I think you know every every player has has their holes and their days off, obviously, um, but you know. We're so, we're so early in the season. It's 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 too early to start uh, <laughs> getting all over guys because I mean he I mean he's a, he's, a, he's a first round pick. He's a huge body. You know he was, he was hemmed in a bad system for for years. Maybe he's just taking some time to to come out of a shell a little bit. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, assuming Hayes and Ellis are still out, is there any lineup changes you'd like to see? Whether that's switching up lines or special teams units or Maybe a guy in the press box coming back into the lineup. Oh, uh, you know, it's you know, I, I coached for seven years. The Phantoms there, and you could <laughs> you could kick that ball around all day long, right? I mean, it's like I've never been a huge fan of constantly rearranging lines. You know what I mean? I think you got to let things settle. It's easy to do. I think a lot of coaches do it just to justify their position. It's like, oh, well, it's like I'm just doing something. Yeah, and it, and it could shake it should shake things up. Um, but you know, outside of the last game there, I mean, I, I didn't see anything wrong with what was going on. Um, um, to me, there's, there's no real, there's no real magical answer here with, with this stuff. I think it's just like as a collective unit, whatever line you're on, however it plays out, we just gotta, you just gotta show up and execute. You know what I mean? There's no. If, if it was that easy, like, you know, everyone would be doing it, you know, to just to, to make that simple fix. And then all of a sudden everything's going to be better. But uh, I think you just got to, you know, like, like let guys be build that chemistry. If, if you're, I know a lot, I know it's better like this year than last year, but like, you know, as soon as something doesn't go right, just, you know, blow up, blow up the house of cards and change everything up all the time, change up the pairs and all that stuff. It's like, I don't agree with that all the time. Yeah. Over time, if like this happens another game, in another game, well, then, yeah, yes, you got to you got to address something for sure. But I think the last game was just the, you know, just the just what you call it, one of those games you just want to move on from and learn from. Um, but um, there's 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 no, there's nothing there's nothing really to do besides just refocus and, and show up for tomorrow night's game on the road and, and get after it. You coached a lot of these guys in the minors, whether that's Sanheim or Sam Moran, Albeke Bell, Lawton. I think he even coached Coots a little bit in the lockout season. How would you say some of these guys have developed since you coached them? Yeah, I mean, they've come a long way. You know, it's it's a process, right? I mean, um, guys are coming out of junior hockey and they're the big dogs and 
Um, they, I, I don't think they realize how, how good of a league the American Hockey League is. So there's a little bit of a culture shock there, the speed, the transition. I mean, all these guys can play, obviously. There's a reason why they're there in the first place. The reason why the Flyers or any NHL team would draft these guys is they, they, they can play. The biggest thing that I, I see is just the is, – is not like so much that their ability has gotten better, that they're just more confident hockey players. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I look at C- Cubes. Um, you know, Cube was one of those guys that like, you know, he, 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 he's built like a shit brick house. He's, he, he's strong. He's explosive. But it was always up here for him. It was just like a little bit, you know, like in, in, inconsistent. But I've seen his game mature where he, I think he understands his role a little bit more. Um, so he's able to kind of stay in his lane and, 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 and perform in a consistent way, not thinking that he's something he's not right, right now in his career. You know, Sani was... He's an offensive defenseman. Can, you know, he can carry the mail, but I think he, even for himself, I think part of the messaging always is like simplifying your game. Like, like you, know, you don't have to carry the mail every every shift and, and every time you have the puck. Like sometimes the best play is just moving the puck up 10, 15 feet and then jumping up in the play. They're always talking about activating the defenseman, getting him up in the rush and stuff like that. But San, you know, he's an, obviously a great player. Um um, already, but again, I think it's just the once you mature, you mature, you have more confidence, and then obviously the game seems a little crisper for these guys. They're just making stronger plays. So um, lots, lots has come a long way. I mean, this guy's had a um, an interesting road, being a first rounder, and I think what he played two or three years fully, and you know, and, and with the Flyers there, maybe maybe two, and they land up coming back down to the Fams for a full year. Could have gone the other way. Could have you know, completely lost the guy, but you know, he, he buckled up and. And reeled in his mind and 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 focused on his game and and, and was humbled. And you could see it. You know what I mean? He's he, he again. He's in a more refined role, um, in a role that he could be more successful in and find more consistency in. Um, comes with maturity, and then it, you know confidence comes with maturity. Um, you know Sam, poor Sam is is banged up there. But um, you know I I, I think I think the biggest thing, and it's kind of and I've said it several times here now. It's just like a, a combination of you know, growing mentally, maturing, and then uh, the confidence comes along with it. You can see the difference between a, a confident player and a player that doesn't have confidence. I remember coaching, and, and you know, that was one of the biggest things that you hear from guys. Like, I just don't have any confidence. I don't have any confidence. And I remember Terry Murray the one time, you know, taking a, a blank piece of paper and, and writing the word confidence on it and sliding it over to one of the players. He's like, here you go. And it's like, you know, like the coach can't give you confidence, right? Like that's something that you have to generate within. And it does come with more practice, more reps, um, just more experience, right? You get a couple of years pro underneath your belt and, um, you know, and, and it shows. So, um, you know, I, I think that that's the biggest piece for these guys is to keep growing more mentally than physically. You know, I mean, the skills, they have the skills. Obviously, you got to keep refining them, keep getting the, rap, the reps in. But I think it's, it's, it's up here. And if they can keep, you know, working on the game and, and becoming more mature, the, their confidence will grow and then it'll, it'll show in the game. Uh, you also played with Claude Giroux when he was 20, 21, 22 years old, just breaking into the league. And same thing with JVR. How would you evaluate those guys' careers since you played with them 11 years ago? Yeah, I mean, um, amazing, both of them. I mean, um, you know, gee, I mean, to be the, the longest, lasting uh flyers captain you know i mean i don't know how many games he's played now um but i mean the guys the guy's amazing we knew he was amazing back in the day um i know he takes a lot of flack <clears throat> uh, from some fans but um he really is one of those I say I say quiet leaders i mean he he's verbal when he needs to be but he's come a long way talk about maturity he was just a little kid i mean his, his he had peach fuzz on his face uh you know, when, when I, when I was playing with him, you know, he's got the full board with full, full bore, you know, warrior beard, um, going on. And, 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 and that comes just with like, his, his obviously his physical maturity, but like, um, just his, his presence and, and, and the confidence that he brings, but the guy, the, the guy is still performing on a high level. I mean, either this guy cares, this guy works, uh, you're not going to find a better passer, um, you know, available to, 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 to ever replace this guy. Um, JVR, same thing. I mean, you talk about maturity, this guy, we had him on our podcast as well, well as well as Claude, but, uh, as far as like, just like just maturing and, and, and stronger in his game and, and then like learning how to take care of himself and then taking his game to a next level and self-preservation. But like this guy 
understand the off ice component and, and how to prevent injuries very well. And, you know, just, uh, he's taking his game to a whole other level. Um, but, uh, it's nice to see these guys grow. I mean, you always know these guys have ability, but to stay in the league that long and, and stay healthy, you know, knock on wood, you know, that long and to be able to, to perform, um, you know, shows, shows their character and stuff. So I'm, I, I'm proud to say that I've played with these guys and, and, and friends with these guys, but it's just nice to see them, um, again, have success and, and, and grow and, and, you know, be, be a big part of the team. Hayes and Ellis made the road trip uh, to Dallas and, well, they're playing Carolina and then Dallas. Uh, if they're able to come back, what kind of impact can those two have on the lineup? A yeah, huge impact. Um, I mean, listen, one guy can can move the puck up and put pucks to the net, you know, from the or from the back end. I mean, you know, anytime you have an added guy like that on the back end, I mean, your team is immediately better, right? And then, you know, on, on the front end, I mean, you got a big body that can, can score and make plays and create space. Um, it's only going to enhance the team. There's no question. And, and, and good guys, good team guys, either like, you know, core guys, veteran veteran guys. So, um, you know, you miss two pieces like that, the team's only going to be beefed up. So uh, hopefully they can get back in. I don't know what the, what the status. I know I've seen a couple videos of uh, Hazy and, and them skating and stuff like that. So they're obviously not too far off. Um, and uh, whether, whether they get in or not, I, I don't know. But um, that means that they're, you know, if they're not in this this weekend, that maybe they're ready for Tuesday or, or Thursday or Saturday of next week. So um, and, you know, for that homestand, but um, you know, two two great players, two great players that uh, can help this team uh, build off the momentum they've created early in the season. The last one I got for you: you're playing in the Flyers alumni game on Monday. Is there anyone you're looking forward to seeing, playing with, playing against? Man, there's a lot of them. There's there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, a lot of guys coming in for the game. Um, you know, Upshaw is one of them. You know, you know, a couple of these guys are around, but I just don't see them that often, like Hartsey and and uh, and Danny B. And and you know, there's a good group of guys. Our Eshi's coming in. Um, and even got like Donald Brashear that I fought five times back in the day. You know, and <laughs> he's got coming in. So there's like yeah, a ton of them. I mean, it's 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 an amazing uh, uh, set of players. You know, two full rosters of you know, some some big names and and guys that are meat and potatoes um, in flyer in the in the Flyers land. So um, I'm just excited to be to be around it, and you know, grateful for the opportunity. Um, but it'll be fun, man. I'm just, I'm really excited, looking forward to it. Uh, and you know, talk it obviously. I mean, and some of these guys coming in, Mark Howe, you know, a lot of these guys we've had on the podcast. So nice to see them in the flesh and get on the ice with them and and have some fun. So. It'd be a great experience. Awesome. Uh, thanks for joining me this week, and I'll see you all Monday. Sounds good. Appreciate it, Travis. Make sure you check out Riles on Twitter and Instagram at RileyCote32. And make sure you check out Nasty Knuckles on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I hope you enjoyed our interview, and make sure you tune back next week as I continue to post weekly episodes. This episode was produced, written, and edited by me. You can follow me on Twitter at TraviBallin26. Feel free to throw some suggestions my way, and I'll talk to you next week. Go Flyers! Flyers.